Hello and welcome everybody. We're going to party like it's 1957. And today's party is brought to you by Bob Tosky and McGregor. So, Bob Tosky is an interesting character. The 50s are an interesting time. Post-war in the 50s in Europe, it was reconstruction, reconstruction, reconstruction. Same with Asia. Here in the United States, it was just, oh, well, we have lots of industry. Let's just make fast cars and sprawling suburbs and rock this town, right? So this is the era when Bob Tosky came on the scene. 1949 is when he started his PGA career. 1954, he won the, I forget what it's called. It's like the World Championship of Golf or something. And he was the money leader that year in the PGA Tour. That says something, okay, in 1954. And so they started coming out with these clubs in that era, right? It's the early 50s, 54, 55, and then 57, when this club was produced, you can tell because of the grip. We'll talk about that here when we have a close-up. It was really like a mainstay putter here. So for me, this is a grand old time with sprawling suburbs, fast cars, and golf included in the American recipe. So let's take this onto the review table and have a closer look. So today we're going to have a golf ball here on screen just kind of as a size reference to the size of the putter. The uh, Bob Tosky right here, 100 GP, you can see identified by Bob Tosky on the sole. McGregor, 100 GP. This rich two-toned look right here. I love the brass chrome. They made a full brass version, but I think this always stood out to me as the more interesting of the two models. They have an upturned toe and an upturned heel, supposed to prevent scabs. Again, nowadays people are like, just get custom fit. Or just, you know, they have so many different lies on putters. It's so easy to just pick one off the shelf that fits your stroke. And I also find it interesting that, I don't, I'm not sure if this is Bob Tosky's nickname or how this works, but it says Mighty Might right here, alternate spelling. And it's ambidextrous, right? So you can go left or right-handed and this alignment kind of works for both. So pretty interesting that stamp right there. Moving up the putter, we have this ferrule. Normally it goes black, white, green, white, black. The green ring right here is broken off, and so the top of the ferrule has been slid down. This isn't what it normally looks like. And we know this is made after 1957 or 1957 or later because it has this amazing leather, wound leather grip, and it has this little slot right here for a ball marker. And in 1957, they introduced this McGregor on all their putters. It's like, you can put ball markers right here and then slide them out whenever you need to mark your ball on the green. How thoughtful. Yeah, you can tell there's no ball marker here. It's missing. So uh, as far as the longevity of these grips go, not so sure about that. I tried putting a penny and a dime. They don't fit in here. Dimes are too big to put in here. Maybe someday I'll find a ball marker that fits in there. Anyway, we should get this upstairs onto my practice putting green and hit a few. So looking down at this, there's a mighty mite right here, kind of a center line mark. However, as far as alignment goes, it's all just down to me. The last putter I hit was a TaylorMade Spider, which has a much more bold alignment system. So with this one, it's all down to not just alignment, but also the stroke. I have to hit this like strike. I have to strike this so perfectly. Feels very light, gives me good feedback. So when I hit this putter, it doesn't quite feel quite as good as a bullseye putter. It doesn't look as good as a McGregor Ironmaster putter or a Wilson 8802, or an Arnold Palmer. To me, this putter is very much a timepiece. When I see putters like this, I think of the 50s, maybe the 40s, 50s, 60s, but right around that era, because that's when these were really popular. I, the two-tone does a lot for it, the brass with the chrome-plated, satin finish, whatever they called it, chrome around here. So it looks dated now, Whereas an Iron Master doesn't. The Ping Answer, you know, which came out in 68. To me, 
that is the future in modern putter. And this was kind of the end of an era of these more bladed putter. But you could argue that the bullseye putter, which is the best of the best of the blades, lived on through the 80s. So to me, an interesting historical little piece of the 50s here. And that's about it. So if I were to build a 50 set, I would definitely consider this along with the Iron Masters, along with the uh, Bullseye Putter. So let me know your thoughts about the Bob Tosky. This is the 100 GP Putter. Bob Tosky, very interesting story. I'm excited to read your comments. If you want to support the channel, you can visit my Amazon shop in the links in the description below. I make some proceeds from qualifying purchases. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.